What's going on gamers and collectors? DGC finally back with another video. Sorry for the long break there, just straight up, be honest with you, I just needed a break. Just needed to play some games and do other things aside from making YouTube for a little while. Now that I've taken that break, the videos will continue as they used to, and uh, let's check out these pickups. <laughs> Alright, so first thing up, you already know that I had to grab one of these. Um, debating on getting the green one, I kind of want it, but at the same time, I already have one. Am I really going to alternate between du two Dukes? Probably not, so I probably don't really need it. Had I known they were going to release the green one, though, probably would have opted for the green one. Alright, now here's something that I've wanted for a really long time. Um, this is kind of a nice piece that most collectors want to have in their collection. Um, wanted it for quite some time now. Finally made it happen. This is a back compat PS3 for USB port. Um, pretty decent shape. Had to clean it really well, but now it's in good shape. So happy to have added this to the collection. Um, these are definitely getting harder and harder to come by in working condition. They uh, are obviously starting to die because they are. 12 years old at this point so uh, yeah they're pretty old <laughs> alright so this is kind of a two or three months worth of pickups here quite a bit of stuff here um, some of this might have already even been in a video before like I think a few of them I can't honestly remember and I didn't check up my last pickups video before recording this so might be a couple in here that have already been in a video before but that's okay um, so I picked up, well actually these were sent to me by a buddy, this is uh, Wave Race 64 and Super Mario 64, the Japanese re-releases, so these actually have rumble in them. These are really sweet, um, I definitely, enjoy, I've only played Wave Race so far with the rumble, and it, it definitely adds a nice, um, I don't know, just like an extra feel to it, because I mean there was really only a few 64 games that I remember, remember playing with rumble, and Wave Race was not one of them until now. Uh, both those are super cheap though. You can get them for like 15, 20 bucks on eBay. Definitely recommend them. Um, you don't really need to be able to read to play the Mario 64, and you don't really need to be able to read in Japanese to play Wave Race 64 either. So they're pretty easy to play in Japanese. Uh, then we got a couple super games here. These I'm not sure if I showed off or not yet. Can't remember. This is uh, Phalanx. So this is a shoot 'em up for the uh, Super Nintendo. It's. Um, <laughs> I just always think the cover is super funny because it's got a guy playing a banjo which has nothing to do with the game whatsoever, but it's a cool cover. Then we, I grabbed uh, Act Razor 2, really sweet game, got this actually pretty reasonable, this was like 15 bucks, so not terrible, same with the Phalanx, was 15 as well. Uh, Lion King, I ended up picking this up for like 5 bucks I think. Um, oddly enough, I've never actually owned this, I've only ever played the Genesis version, don't own that either. Um, fun game, I got to the second or third level on this. <clears throat> and then uh, Top Gear. Really, I, I really love these old school, um, you know, like the racing ones where you go straight in, kind of like Outrun basically, but I love all those old school games. Um, so the other day I got a massive Dreamcast lot. Well, not a lot. It was at a store, but I lotted them together. Um, so I've really been digging the Dreamcast lately, and um, yeah, <laughs> and then I picked up a ton of games for it picked up Grandia 2. Uh, see, all these are CIB. You know me, everything is CIB. But, well, except for Nintendo stuff. But, um, so Grandia 2, oddly enough, the day I got this last Sunday, and uh, I think it was that Monday or Tuesday, they announced the HD collection coming for the Switch. And funny enough, I got four hours deep into this, and the save file corrupted, and then, like, it was that next day that they announced the HD collection. So I was like, all right. Don't really need to play this anymore. That was a waste of money, but it is what it is. Um, still want to play it, but now I'm going to play it on the Switch because save file got corrupted, and now I just don't even want to put that into my Dreamcast anymore. Out Trigger. This is a really weird, um, sort of like the original like Horde mode game, because you basically go into the level, and then you just have waves of enemies coming at you. Um, it's interesting. The controls are not terrible. It, it plays fun. It looks pretty decent for a Dreamcast game. Uh, then we got this one here. I haven't tried this one just yet. This is called Max Steel. I've never even seen or heard this until I saw it. Um, it looks like it's some kind of action-adventure game of some sort, like 3D action-adventure game. 
Now this one actually really piqued my interest when I saw it. This is a uh, RTS on the console, so this is Conflict Zone Modern War Strategy. Um, so yeah, it's an RTS on the console. I actually really can't wait to play this. I love RTS games and don't feel like we get enough of them on PC or even console at this point in time. Like we, When I was younger we used to get RTSs all the time. Command and Conquers, uh, Lord of the Rings games, Star Wars Empire at War, you know, just uh, all those old school RTSs that we used StarCraft. I mean, just tons of games, but we don't get them anymore, but it is what it is. Uh, Fighting Force 2, I played this for a good few hours and, and enjoyed it. Um, graphically, it looks pretty good. However, the and the sound is okay, but it's very monotonous and boring and repetitive. You're just in these tight corridors, and you're just doing one punch, one punch, or one kick, or one kick, and then punch and kick, and then you can get guns and knives and stuff, but it's just very, I don't know, I found it to be boring. Like, I like the one on the 64, um, which I guess was the prequel to this, I think, um, or the first one, rather. Uh, yeah, I don't know, just not really feeling that, but I might try to beat it just to say that I enjoyed it. Uh, and then we got Psychic Force 2012, so I haven't tried this one yet either because this doesn't, yeah, this one doesn't do VGA, and right now my Dreamcast is only hooked up via VGA to my TV, so I haven't actually been able to try this. And um, Psychic Force, so it's like a weird fighting game. I believe there was a first one to this on the PS1, or it might have been this exact same game. I know there's some version of this on the PS1. Now here's a really weird one as well, which I did play again for quite a few hours already. This is MDK2. Um, so this is it has a really strange cover on it. It's got a dog with six arms on it and a mad scientist who creates the dog with six arms. And it's a third person shooter, or no, well it's third or first person, you can switch. Um, it's very weird, so how did, okay, so the four face buttons are how you, yeah, so that's how you move around, right? And then the left analog stick is how you actually aim your um, cursor, I guess you would say, or aimer, or whatever you want to crosshair. Um, and it's just, it felt very weird at first, but then I was like, well, you know what? With the limited hardware that the Dreamcast was, didn't have a second analog stick, pretty much what they had to do. However, this one can play with the, um, oh no, it's not this one. I don't know, some of these can play with the mouse and stuff. I was looking into maybe getting one of those. I've never had one. Um, some of the games definitely use the mouse and keyboard and stuff to play with, which is really kind of cool, and we haven't really seen that since the Dreamcast, that like um, the GameCube had the keyboard controller, but that was only for Fantasy Star, and then the 360 has the keyboard for your controller, like it plugs in the bottom, but that's really all. We, we've never seen another console with like a keyboard and mouse. Supposedly Microsoft's going to make that happen. That'd be kind of cool. Um, then we got Spawn. This is probably uh, out of the Dreamcast lot here. I would say this is the rarest one that was in the lot of games that I bought. This is uh, Spawn in the Demon's Hand. So this is a really cool, um, kind of like over-the-shoulder arena-based um, fighter, shooter, horde mode type thing again. Um, really great visuals on this. Uh, this was the thing I was like most excited to try because I really love Spawn as a character. Really cool game. I got to the third level. Not ashamed to admit it, got my ass kicked like three times and I was just like, boop, I can't play this right now. So, uh, definitely a very difficult game, but really cool. And everybody always talks about Skies of Arcadia and other things like that, and uh, the Grandia series, and other, and Lunars and stuff getting ported up. I want to see something like this get ported up to the, to the Switch or any of the systems, and then bring back the multiplayer, and I feel like that would be a blast to play something like that, like some arena-based 90s games, you know? I feel like that'd be pretty sweet. We got Death Crimson OX. This is some sort of, again, I haven't tried this one yet. This is um, some sort of first person hack and slash type game, I believe. I, I don't know, but from the back of it, it looks like it has very good visuals for a Dreamcast game on it, that's for sure, just from these screen grabs. Uh, here's one I did try and probably won't ever play again. Kind of pissed at this game because I wanted it to be good. This is a F3 50, or F355 Challenge Pash. Passion Rosa. So this is a Ferrari game. Um, visually, really solid looking game. However, um, the controls are really terrible, and I don't know if that's just because I've played a ton of Forza, a ton of Need for Speeds, and a ton of Gran Turismo's, and other various games like that where they control really well. But this game just, it, just really terrible. Don't recommend that one whatsoever. 
I uh, have not tried this one yet, but I'm a huge Star Wars guy. And this one actually, so this is Star Wars Demolition. So from the looks of it, it looks like this. So you've got Rancors, Boba Fett, a Stinger, a Lance Beater, Pod Racers, ATSTs, Battle Tanks, Desert Skiff, and Snow Speeders. And um, I don't know, it looks like you get to play with all those different vehicles. And it's got, um, what's his name back here, Jabba the Hutt on the back. And... I don't know. Looks like it could be a sweet game, so I'm definitely looking forward to trying that. However, upon driving home with my buddy, I did realize that this has a Hollywood video sticker on the the disc, so I'm a little pissed about that. But otherwise, these are all absolutely mint condition. Uh, and then we got Test Drive V Rally. So this one looks pretty sweet graphically. Again, this looks really good. Um, really cool. I haven't tried it yet though. Like it, I, I watched a review on it though, so it, it definitely looks like it would be a good driving game. I enjoy driving games every now and then. And funny enough, I actually traded in a bunch of games there. And I traded in my Platinum Hits, or what did they call them? All-Stars. Sega All-Stars copy of the uh, Crazy Taxi. <laughs> and then I bought the normal version. Because I hate Platinum Hits. They just look terrible in your collection. I'm sorry. Um, and speaking of that, that really drives my OCD crazy when you've got the white spine and the black spine. But that's how Sega decided to do it for whatever reason. Uh, again, I had this disc only. This is uh, Jet Grind Radio, but now I have it complete. This is an amazing copy. It's in great shape. Love that game. Love that series. Again, another game that I would really love to see would be a third one in that. And there was like a fan-made project going on right now, but I believe Sega didn't like deny them, but they were like not happy about them making it, I believe. But um, I don't know. I, I would love to see that. I would love to just see an HD package of Jet, uh, jet Set Radio and Jet uh, Grind Radio, I think that would be really sweet. Or no, it's Jet Set Future. No, it's Jet, yeah, it's jet Set Future. Um, and then uh, Daytona USA. So this is probably my favorite uh, Sega racing game. I, I just really love Daytona, mainly because of the music. Um, the song is just really great. <laughs> it just cracks me up every time I hear it. Daytona! <laughs> uh, I just love Daytona. I really do. Um, and then we got three Genesis games here, we got, um, well, I'll show this one last, actually, and we'll show this one first. So, my other favorite Sega racing game is OutRun. Um, I like OutRun 2 and OutRun Coast to Coast 2006 more. Um, they're both Xbox original games, and then you got the original. The original's great. Uh, I definitely enjoy it. However, you know, I just like the 3D ones better. Then we got uh, Ghouls and Ghosts here. These are CIB as well, by the way. Um, yeah, so solid game. Actually beat this. Um, not gonna lie, did use a game shark to do it because it's a tough game. However, now that I know the course and the path and where the enemies spawn, I think if I were to do it a few times like that, I could probably go through it without the game genie. So in that sense, it's kind of cheating, but it's kind of like I'm enjoying the game because they. This was designed to suck your quarters down or. or designed around the principle of a game that was designed to suck your quarters down so obviously it's hard as hell we already know that but I wanted to beat it and enjoy it so it is what it is if I use Game Genie here's another game that I beat with Game Genie this is quite expensive I've been wanting to have this in the collection for a long time this is a very mint copy of this this is Contra Hard Corpse um, very beautiful condition the whole case got the hang tag everything not going to say what I paid for this because it was quite pricey. And this is the actual original print made by Konami uh, cartridge. And I, not, again, used the Game Genie to beat it. Um, I absolutely love this game. However, to me, and I had a, not a heated debate, but I had a debate with my gaming buddy. He's a Sega guy. I'm mainly a Nintendo guy. Which was better, Contra 3 or Contra Hard Corps? Obviously, he went with Hard Corps. Obviously, I went with Contra 3. I just think Contra 3 is a better game. Hard Corps is a solid game, and I now own it and will own it forever. But to me, I think Contra 3 is better. I love the top-down levels. I love just everything about Contra 3. To me, it's my favorite Contra. All right, uh, let's go for this little stack here. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of people pick these up here lately. I picked these up actually literally two or three months ago and just haven't shown them yet. That being Eternal Ring. This is by Age Tech. I believe this could be uncommon because if you recall, Age Tech is actually the maker or publisher of a lot of those rare PS2 horror games. I never really see this game. I, I'm just speculating. I have no idea. Frankly, I don't. I don't know anything about PS2 collecting. 
I think with these two games, I'm still under 30 PS2 games. PS2 was never my thing, so I could just be talking out of my ass here. Uh, again, another game that I really never see, and this is actually made by Sony, this is Ex Extermination. So this is some kind of horror game. Um, again, haven't really had a chance to play it yet. So it, it's like a shooting horror game. So I guess basically a ripoff of Resident Evil that Sony tried to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's not that great because I've never heard of it and there's no sequels to this. However, it could be kind of a hidden gem. I don't know. I'll report back once I've played it. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, and then we got one 360 game here. This is an exclusive going to the exclusive set that will eventually get its own series on the channel. Uh, we got Ninja Blade finally. CIB. Uh, this recently went up in value because of a hidden gems video. Um, I was lucky enough to immediately... GameStop it and find one at my house for five dollars with the elite card got it for I don't know like four bucks So these are now going for 50 bucks. So if you didn't buy ninja blade before Yeah, sorry about that <laughs> um, Then we got angry bridge trilogy for the complete Wii U set definitely excited to have this No, I'm not excited to have this um, Oddly enough, this is the first time I've ever seen this so <clears throat> I don't know if these are like uncommon or people just keep them in their collections. There definitely wasn't a large print run on this, that's for sure, because um, I really have never seen it, um, but now I have it. All right, we got some Xbox One games here. Now, a few of these I think I may have shown off, but I don't honestly remember. Um, definitely have not shown this one yet. This is being the Sega Genesis Classics Collection. Uh, I opted for the Xbox One version because I've been, as far as modern consoles, more into the Xbox One X versus the PlayStation. However, now I regret not getting it for the PlayStation because they added a VR feature, and I love the PSVR. So I might double dip on it, and then I honestly kind of want it on my computer as well, but I don't think triple dipping would be very good. So I think I might even just not double dip on it, but we'll see. Now here's one that I kind of got, got duped by Microsoft on. Um, so ReCore was a game created by some of the Metroid Prime um, studio, original studio, and it came out 2016, I think? Some, like summer, fall 2016 was when ReCore came out. I was very hyped for it. Pre-ordered it, and I really don't pre-order a lot of games. I really don't. Um, very hyped for the game. Like the trailers, everything at E3 got me super hyped for this game, and it came out and I, I fell in love with it. I really did. Like, I really loved ReCore. And then come to find out, day one, there was like an 8-gig patch. And I'm like, All right, whatever. This is the state of current gaming. So I accepted it. And then they came out with a definitive edition, which I might add, I'm pretty sure only Amazon sells this, and I think they're sold out. Because um, I got this for clearance for 5 bucks from Amazon. They're the only place I've ever seen sell these. Now we're going to get to the first caveat of this, though. It does actually say Definitive Edition on the disc, and the cover is different, and it even says Definitive Edition here. However, the game that's on the disc is still the same as the day one print for the original game in 2016, even though it says Definitive Edition. I'm pretty sure this is false advertisement. This doesn't have the patches on it, this doesn't have diddly squat of the actual update, because there's five robots on the cover, the spider, the dog, the little tank, the monkey, and then the little flying guy. On the original cover, which I traded into GameStop, um, there was all five of them as well. However, the flying one was not in the game, I don't think, and that's what makes it the definitive edition. I, I don't I honestly know, but either way, that's some bullshit, Microsoft. This isn't even on the fucking disc. Like, how did we as gamers come to accept this? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly pissed about it. I love the game, I really do, and we're never going to get a sequel to that, but, I mean, really, like, that's that's your definitive edition, printing the same thing, giving me a new sticker on the top of it? Thank you, Microsoft. All right. Uh, I've always wanted uh, Witcher 3 Complete Edition. I have uh, the normal edition on PS4 and both the DLCs in the physical pack for PS4. However, CD Projekt Red releases discs definitively properly because this has all the patches and the DLC on the disc because they did it properly. So, fuck you again, Microsoft. Um, now, again, here's a really weird one. Um, Segalacious actually just picked this up as well. Uh, this is inside in limbo on a disc. However, what's weird about this is, and we both noticed this, 
Um, this does not install to your hard drive. It actually reads straight off the disc, so I think this very well might be a DVD and not actually be a Blu-ray. I can't tell, but it does not install to your um, hard drive, which is very weird because I've never seen that happen before. So if anybody knows any more about that, definitely leave a comment down below. Um, now here's an RPG that has not really got a lot of attention yet, and I think it's kind of a shame that it hasn't. Uh, as soon as I saw this, I knew that I wanted it because it really reminded me of Oblivion and that being Elix. Um, I've, I jumped into this for about an hour and a half and I really enjoyed what I played so far, but this is a large commitment to play a game like this. This is like a hundred hour RPG and I just don't know if I can handle doing that right now. Um, it's just a lot of commitment to play in a game, it really is. Alright, um, I guess let's go for some Switch titles here and then speed the how many minutes oh shit we're already at 20 minutes whatever it's been a long time since i made a video so i'm just enjoying talking about these games so either you like it or you don't it is what it is um all right so we got two here from actually three from limited run for the switch uh i guess we'll go in order this is uh the, the first game this is thimbleweed park again i played this for a few hours um Pretty pretty fun game, honestly. Like I don't know how long it is. I I, I honestly kind of want to restart it and like commit to it and beat it. Um, pretty fun. I, it's definitely got a lot of humor in it. It reminds me a lot of like those '90s um, point-and-click games, like the um, I forget what they're called. The one with the, the the dog and the rabbit, and then the one with the little oh, what are those fucking games called? <laughs> totally drawing a blank. I've played them, and then like Monkey Island and that kind of stuff. They're very funny. Uh, which one is number two? This is number two. We got Mercenary Kings Reloaded Edition. This has some some heft to it because it has it actually has a really nice manual inside. Um, actually, you know what? No, this is a comic book, but it's like super thick. Really nice. Uh, I I opted to flip the cover because I think that cover looks a little bit cooler with like the menacing bad guy on the on the back there. Uh, and then we got Flint Hook here. Uh, so I like this game. And again, this has a nice, pretty thick manual in it. This one actually has, uh, this is more of like an art book. Um, again, I opted to flip the uh, cover on that one because I think that cover looks better to me than the original. Um, pretty cool game, though. I, I definitely like this. I'm really glad I picked these three games up. I'm not getting all of the limited run games for any system or even the Switch, which is still doable right now because they're not that expensive. Um, but there was a couple that I just, I just like the slime game for the Switch. I just didn't do it for me so I was like you know what I don't really want that game because it doesn't really look that cool don't waste your money on games that you don't want only buy shit that you want to play all right now here's a cool one that you should waste some money on because it's actually not expensive and it's really sweet runner 3 um, I've never played any of the runner games until now this is really fun like this is a solid pick up and play game you could pick this up play one two three ten levels and just really have a blast with it and the replay value of this is pretty fun because it just is like it's it, it almost kind of reminds me of the first time I played Mario because like you have to like learn the height of the jumps and learn all this different stuff over again kind of like the first time you played Mario and it's um, really recommend this game I think it's 30 bucks MSRP and if you got gamers club it's 24 or whatever you know so it's a super cheap game uh, now here's one that I haven't invested much time into yet and I'm kind of sad to say that because I was actually really looking forward to this because I loved the Wii U Mario Tennis, and that being Mario Tennis Aces. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've played probably about 15 matches on it, so I've played uh, probably, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour and a half total. Really good game. I haven't actually tackled the story yet. Um, I've actually heard that it's pretty okay, it's okay, but I've heard that it kind of gets a little repetitive down the line because you do a lot of the same stuff. I'm sure you can see that holographicness of what this is. Uh, Sonic Mania Plus, um, really great game. I'm about halfway through it. Um, the, the good thing about like these old school Sonics is, is like, sure it has a story, but like I can just pick this up and play it, and then put it down and come back to it whenever I want. Uh, really cool, definitely digging it. I love this um, the art book that it comes with and all that stuff. One thing that I would say though, for anybody that has this or is looking to get this for the for the Switch, and you maybe have an Xbox or a PlayStation, I kind of regret getting it for the Switch, only in the sense that. This spot here is totally going to get smashed one day because this slipcover was a universally sized slipcover because this will fit the PlayStation case and Xbox case in there perfectly. So I could just foresee this spot getting smashed one day. So just the collector in me is not happy about that. I think they should have shrunk it down to the Switch size, but whatever. Uh, let's see here. We got one last one here. I'm not really, uh, 
not really feeling this game. I got to be honest with you. Everybody was uh, up in a buzz when this game came out, and everybody was having a hard on for this game. Um, Octopath Traveler, the Wayfarer's Edition. Uh, it is open. I have played it. Um, I think I played it about two hours. And then I restarted it with. I started with the Thief for two hours. Then I restarted it with the Hunter for about an hour. I want to get into it. I really do, but I just. There's just too many random fucking encounters for me. It's just too much. I, I, I couldn't, I can't deal with that. It's, it's like playing uh, Skies of Arcadia on the Dreamcast. It's just every five seconds. At least it was for me. Like, it just literally seemed like I would go ten feet and then I would just be, like, in a battle again. I enjoy battling in RPGs. That's what you do. But, I mean, like, this is just way too much battling. It's, uh, like, I want to play it because everybody says it's got a, excuse me, great story and stuff, but, like, it's just too much battling for me. I just couldn't. I, it's just not for me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this nice, delicious, limited stack for later. Um, here is a limited PS4 release as well, though. This is a uh, ruiner for the PS4, obviously. Uh, this was limited to, I want to say it was 2,000 copies. And the first 500 people got this nice art book. I was one of those first 500 people. Um, it's really nice. It's like nice, thick uh, like photo paper that it's really nice looking I um, yeah like I actually sat here and just like looked at the art book for like a good 20 minutes um, before I even played the game because it's just like and then it's like holographic and stuff inside and very premium art book I'm really glad to have this uh, again I kinda wish this was like a you know a millimeter shorter so that it would fit in the case However, it doesn't, so like I don't. I just kind of have to like leave it on top of the case, which is kind of annoying, but is what it is. Uh, then we got Gundam Versus. This uh, I got this for 15, uh, used on eBay, but not terrible price. This still has a decent online community, so I enjoyed that a little bit. Then we got Shadow of the Colossus. Got this for 20 bucks. Uh, that was on sale, so good deal on that. Now here's another limited game. This is uh, Bunny Must Die, Chelsea and the Seven Devils. So this is actually from uh, Strictly Limited Games. This was limited to like 1,500 copies, I think. I don't know. Uh, it's a Metroidvania game. Oh, there's totally... Oh, that's right. They, um... I forgot about that. Oh, everything's blowing up over here. Um, so they actually shipped out the game late because they weren't individually numbered. So mine is R579 whatever that's supposed to mean to me it doesn't matter because I actually open mine and play them um, but since they shipped them out late they sent me a sweet tote bag strictly limited game and then they also sent me a shit ton of stickers so if I ever do a game trade with you or I don't know whatever something I will just send you a sticker for whatever reason just because I have them I can kinda of forgot they were even in here um, and then we got a couple more limited games here we got Carol Blaster so this is a cool I don't even know what you would relate this to. This, I don't know. I guess it's kind of contra-esque. Then we got Oregon Trail, and oddly enough, this is clearly uh, a rip-off of Oregon Trail. Uh, I thought this was Oregon Trail when I ordered it, and mistakenly, it is not. However, it's similar, but it's not Oregon Trail that I grew up playing on the computer at school on the Max, way back in the day. Uh, then we got Shenmue One and Two HD. Uh, by the time you're watching this, I've probably already streamed this at least once or twice. I plan on streaming it, so if I haven't yet, I will be. Uh, then we got Job Simulator. Got this right before the price hike. Um, you just have to be smart enough to know when certain videos are going to drop from certain people raising up the prices. And I just uh, got lucky on this one, frankly. Paid a little bit more than MSRP, but it was still... the. I'm pretty sure this is going for like $200 now, so being that I want to complete PSVR set, I can never pay that much for this game. And honestly, it's a fun game, however, the controls are really janky, they're really terrible, they're not very accurate, and I just had a hell of a hard time playing this game. I enjoyed it, but it's, it's just, the controls are kind of a clusterfuck. Alright, then we got Pixel Gear here, another PlayStation VR game. Uh, that was limited run. So that's like a gallery shooter, I guess you would call that. Well, I don't really know what you would call it, but it's a shooter game. Where you just aim around with the move control. VR game, obviously. Uh, VR only. This is a VR mode game, so this is a 
Radical G Racing Evolution, basically an F, uh, F-Zero game. Um, it's not terrible. You can get this. Then we got two more games here for the VR only. I actually... Oh, no, these are VR mode included. Okay, I thought these were both VR only. Uh, this is Volume from Limited Run Games. So this is a really... I don't even know. It's like a top-down puzzle game, and I don't really know how to describe it. You'll just have to look it up, because I can't... I don't, I don't know if you can record VR gameplay. I haven't tried it yet. I don't honestly know. I'm sure you can, but I've never tried it. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty solid game. Glad to have had that. All right, and the last game here is... Uh, the last game for the VR section here is uh, Res Infinite. This is from I Am 8-Bit. It is uh, based in the UK. I was hesitant to buy this because I knew the shipping would be a little expensive, and then it turns out that it wasn't actually that bad. And it actually came super quick. got to me in like two or three days, and um, super great to play Res in VR. All right, so I have a fat stack of <laughs> very limited things here that... Um, Really glad to have grabbed all these. These are all open. I've played all of these actually. Uh, Shikahondo. This is a shoot 'em up. I've already beaten this two times. Once on easy, once on normal. Again, I might stream this at some point. Really, um, I love the music to it. Fantastic music in this game. Great music. I don't recommend uh, digital downloads a lot, but this is a game that you should digitally download. It's Shikahondo. Um, really great soundtrack like it's just great like the music just gets pumping and like right like when it's supposed to and then it like dies off and just and the boss fights are really good there's always two stages to each boss fight like you think they're dying off they're like falling on the screen and then they come back as like a bigger monster and then um i will say the enemy variety is very bland uh there's just i don't know there's i think there was like 10 levels i want to say so 10 bosses um yeah, like the enemies were just the same on each level, and then like every three levels there would be like a new enemy tossed in, and then a new one tossed in, and then like a new one tossed in at like the tenth level. And it's it's a really good game, though. I'm very glad to have this. Uh, definitely recommend digitally downloading this if you want to. Very solid game. Now we got another shoot 'em up here. This is Dimension Drive. So this is also available on the Switch. Uh, I don't think Xbox, and maybe PC. But I obviously collect a lot of limited stuff from PS4 because. It's just the best place to play games, frankly. Um, really great shoot 'em up. Really nice game. Really good art style to this. I really like the art style and just a solid game all around. And then we got one more dungeon. So this is a dungeon crawler, pretty much, and that's pretty much all you need to know about it. It's like a random generated dungeon crawler kind of thing. Really solid game. All right, now here is the PlayStation Vita's swan song. This is the Vita's last great game, in my humble opinion. As a day one buyer, I feel like I can make that claim. Uh, Sir Eats A Lot. Really great game. Uh, the humor of it, it's all hand-drawn. I watched this whole thing through development. I, um, I would really like to see this get ported to a console. Um, I think this, this game deserves more love than it's going to get. And it's, it's, it got released on a dead platform. Um, really great game. Hand drawn, like you run around as a knight with a sword and he eats a lot. <laughs> and it's just a beautiful game. Very beautiful game. Now this one, I don't even honestly know how to pronounce this. this is Reverie, I guess is how you'd say it. Uh, so this is a top-down Zelda-esque game, but you look like Ness and it's got like a bunch of old school genres mixed into this game. Really beautiful art style to it. Uh, cool game. Haven't finished it yet, though. I, I was told about 8 to 10 hours to beat this one, so definitely looking forward to that. And then we got one last shoot 'em up here. This is probably one of the coolest shoot 'em ups I've played in a long time. Definitely, again, another one that I recommend digitally downloading. You can totally see it if you can read that upside down. It's X Morph Defense. Um, again, this is actually. I wonder what engine this uses like game engine I'm not sure it does have Nvidia physics in it for any of you PC guys that know what that is it just essentially adds like a nice just layer of like explosions and just well really frankly anything with the physics because they've you got physics hair works and all all sorts of crazy shit you can do with physics now but really beautiful game and like it's got like base building mechanics and just yeah it's it's a really cool game Definitely recommend this one digitally downloaded. X Morph Defense. Alright, now these last two kind of go to, well, they don't kind of go together, they go together. 
Uh, this is Runbow Skies and Runbow Moon. Um, I opted for the PlayStation 4 versions versus the Vita versions because I like the PlayStation 4 more than the Vita. Um, I don't know which one is actually the first one and which one is the second one because they're not denoted denoted by a 1 or a 2. Um, so if anybody knows which one is the first one and the second one, definitely let me know because I want to play those in order. But again, I've been told that those take about 100 hours to beat, so that's kind of a lot of time to invest into a game. Um, we're now probably almost 30 minutes into this video, if not longer. If you've stuck around this long, definitely be sure to smack that like button. Leave a comment down below if you own any of these games or want to know any more about these games that were in this pickups video. Sorry for the long uh, break there, guys. I think it was just about a month by the time you're watching this. Um, I just frankly just needed a break. Like I just wanted to play some games, so I beat Yakuza Kiwami. Um, and then I beat Yakuza, well, Yakuza 0, then I beat Kiwami, so I played them in order. And then um, Yakuza Kiwami 2 comes out this coming Tuesday. And uh, what else comes out? Uh, Blade Strangers comes out on Tuesday. You got Red Dead soon. You got Forza. You got Smash. You got just so many good games. Uh, Spider-Man. Um, Shenmue. Like, I'm totally trying to get, get more into that. Um, just so many games coming out, and I just don't... Like, I want to keep making videos, I really do, but, like, I just also want to keep playing games, because, like, I'm a gamer first, then a collector, then YouTube. So, like, it's, I'm trying to balance all these things, and then also, like, I totally go out and do other things aside from gaming. Um, so it just, it gets, it gets kind of tough balancing all this stuff. Um, plus, I don't make a dime off YouTube, and I never went into it with the intention of that. Uh, however, I, I really sat down and thought about it. I, I totally love doing this. I really do. I've made a lot of good friends out of YouTube. I really have. A lot of good trades and all that good stuff. Um, but being that I don't make money from it, I don't really need to be investing as much time as I was into YouTube. Not quitting by any means. Xbox series is still coming out. The 360s is still going to come out. Once I get the full Wii U set, there's going to be a lot of Wii U videos. I've got... Um, technically three modded consoles in the works with Rocker Gaming. One should be here this week. The other one, oh, that's totally the middle finger. <laughs> uh, the other one should be, is it's in the stages of planning because he already has all the parts between him and I. And the third one is um, in development, not by him, but we'll get to that. Probably won't be till like next year, but so those are future videos that are coming out, some really badass consoles. Uh, a few of them, I'm going to do a little bit of work on my end on them as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, this, the channel's not going anywhere, but like I just... Videos are going to be a little bit more spaced out. I am working on the EFG video, I promise it is it is coming, it's, it's recorded, I just need to do the gameplay and then voiceovers or whatever, any of that kind of junk that I need to add to it, but... I just was spending so much time on doing YouTube videos and not like enjoying life outside of doing YouTube stuff and not able to play the games that I'm sitting here talking passionately about because like I want to be able to play all these things like Res like this came out like 20 years ago and I'd never played it until now and like well grant I think that only came out in Japan or maybe it came out on PS2 here I don't really know uh, but I know it's like a 20 year old game and I've always wanted to play it finally bought it finally played it it's a fantastic game. Everything you've ever heard about it, it's great. Um, yeah, and I mean, like Mario Tennis, like I totally want to play the story to that. Like I, just all this stuff, like I want to beat it. This is realistically, this is impossible to beat all this. And this isn't even all my games. There's games over there. There's games down there. I mean, um, at this point, it's pretty much impossible. So I have to pick and choose which ones are higher of a priority to beat. And do I want to make a video this week, or do I want to beat Yakuza Kiwami 2, or do I want to? make some trades with some YouTubers or, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just, ugh. and then work's getting crazy and, you know, I don't need to get into all that because that has literally no value to you and what you're watching this for, but, um, yeah, so that's just kind of where I'm at, guys. Channel's not going anywhere, promise that. Uh, I do really love doing this stuff, I really do, but um, it's just going to be a little more sparse. Uh, I'm sure eventually at some point when I move into a more secure location and have more room and more time and I'm not working as much then I will be able to make videos as I want I mean uh, you know not even as a job but like honestly if I had the time I the time and the patience and the skill to edit quick enough I would love to make videos every day if I could I really would but 
the reality of it is the channel just never grew off, grew or took off like I never assumed that it would. Never really wanted it to be that like a huge channel or anything, but enough to where, like on the last Xbox video, it's like 320 views, which is totally okay. But I mean, that's a third of my subscribers, or two thirds that didn't even watch the video. So that's fine. That means you don't like the Xbox videos. That's great. But like, if I spend eight to 15 hours working on a video from filming it to editing the thumbnail, the recording of the gameplay, just everything all around, like it just, it's a lot of work just to get 300 views. And it's just like, fuck. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where my head's at with the whole YouTube thing. Um, they are still going to come, but they're just, it's going to take longer because, frankly, my motivation is just dried up at this point. Um, it, you know, I'm just being real with you. It's just, it sucks to spend so much time on a video and just for it to get like 300 views. It really does. <laughs> um, it's just frankly disappointing because like I'll, I'll watch other channels who, you know, don't put any effort into their videos. Like don't add gameplay, don't don't actually like have any stories to talk about with the games or they're just frankly frankly I don't even think some of these people are gamers they just jumped on because they saw that there was money to be made here but um, <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I don't know YouTube's very funny and this is now getting to be like a 45 minute video but if you've made it this far definitely <laughs> smack that like button um, but yeah sorry for the crazy little rant there if you're, old, if you're an old enough subscriber, you know that I occasionally do this. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of where my head's been. Um, just really enjoying playing games again. And um, yeah, so as always, peace out for now, guys. Till next time. Come here, you mother... I'm on This is it, baby.